Podcast number one is brought to you by Mad Marco Enterprises. Show idea, concept, and design by Marco Liberati. Please enjoy the show. <laughs> Cheers. Tell us another one. A show with tall tales, jokes, and antidotes. And now, please welcome your host, Marco Liberati. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Uh, that was my uh, voiceover guy. A round of applause for Greg Jackson in the audio phone booth. <laughs> Tell us another one. A show with tall tales, jokes and antidotes. Uh, I don't know if you recognise that voice, but he was the guy that used to do the VHS piracy video warnings. Have you hide a video that's not quite right? Have you seen a joke show that's not quite right? Well, welcome. Here it is. <laughs> And uh, we also have uh, bar jokes. We're going to head over to the bar and do some bar jokes. We've got knock-knock jokes. And we're going to finish up with some stand-up material. So we're covering all bases today. <laughs> we have a new segment that we call Joke Off. And joining me on Joke Off is our guest uh, comedian today. Please welcome to the stage, Pradeepra Timmermans. Marco. Hello and welcome. Thank you. So uh, I've got a couple of viewer jokes that have okay. been sent in. So yep. I'll read a couple of viewer jokes. And you've got a, a couple of jokes you want to share with us as well? Yeah. So let's do a couple of jokes. Let's have a joke off, shall we? Do you, sure. uh, do, you, do you want to start? Sure. Carry on. I've got a few jokes back from the 80s. Uh, I'm not very good at old jokes, but I remember some that my auntie used to tell me. Uh, how do you get four elephants into a mini? Cool. How do you get four elephants into a mini? Two in the front, two in the back. <laughs> how do you hide elephants in a strawberry patch? How do you hide, how do you hide elephants in a strawberry patch? Colour their toenails red. <laughs> Fantastic. I know. I know. There was an elephant joke I remember. It was, uh, how do you eat an elephant? How do you eat, eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a, uh, a viewer joke, and for this viewer joke, we also have a sound effect. Uh, let's see if we can get this working. I'm not very tech savvy. I am an old bloke and I'm not a millennial, so here we go. So uh, this joke here starts off with a little bit of fanfare, here we go. Oh, this was done by Penny Kasunas in Springvale. Thanks for sending this one in. I'm going to add a little bit of a dimension to it. So here we go. <laughs> As I said, I'm not very tech savvy. Let's try it <laughs> one more time. Once there were sound effects. That's not a joke. I'm sorry. Let's start again. <laughs> okay. Let's wait this to finish and we'll go. Okay, there we go. And I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Once there were empires run by emperors. Then there were kingdoms run by kings. Now there are countries run. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, and uh, hey, on this joke show we tell you a joke and we tell you another one. Take it away. Alright, well that same auntie that told me those jokes from before was an air hostess back in the 70s. And one time she had a very troublesome uh, customer, person, passenger on the plane, giving her a lot of grief. And uh, at some point he got on his high horse and he said to her, Madam, do you know who I am? And she turned around to the whole plane and she said, Excuse me, does anybody know who this man is? <laughs> he seems to have forgotten his name. <laughs> uh, that was a memory joke. So uh, this was a, uh, there's two old guys and they've been playing chess for years. Every Wednesday night, uh, Barry goes over to Bill's place and they play chess. And, uh, and, and Barry's been noticing that Bill's sort of losing his memory lately. He's not as sharp as he used to be, he keeps forgetting things. And uh, even the names of the pieces, he's been forgetting the names of the pieces and He's letting things slip, he's forgotten dates, names, people, he's gone, oh, this is not good. And then one day he rocks up, one, you know, they have a game Wednesday, the next Wednesday he comes over, and all of a sudden, sharp as a tack. He's, he's firing off, oh, how's the kids? Oh, you had an anniversary last week. Oh, how about your daughter? Had a birthday, fantastic, how did that go? Oh, and the grandson, how old's he now? Six months? Bang, he's just sharp as a tack. He's gone, this is amazing, how did you learn? What, what have you done, what's changed? He goes, oh, I've done a memory course. He goes, wow, what's it called? He goes, hang on a second, I'll do a little bit of <laughs> word association. No, no, bear with me, bear with me, hang on. What's the name of that uh, long-stemmed flower that got thorns on them, traditionally red? He goes, oh, a rose? He goes, that's it. He goes, hang on a second. 
Hey Rose, what's the name of that course I done? <laughs> All right, I think that takes us to the end of Joke Off. So I have a round of applause for Padrupa for coming out and uh, performing for us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Padrupa is going to be uh, headlining at the end of the show. She's got a fantastic little uh, segment lined up and a bit of music for you, a bit of musical talent. Did you guys ever get hit by your parents growing up? <laughs> the audience just woke up there. <laughs> you got hit. What did you, can I ask what you got hit with? Nutella. I mean, uh, Nutella? Wooden, wooden spoon. Wooden spoon. Oh, classic vintage. Vintage move. I like it. You're Greek, right? Yes. That explains it. Yep. <laughs> Us ethnics, I consider myself, we're fans of the uh, child abuse. <laughs> I feel like you see all the, all, the, all the Aussies pulled back. The Greek lady's like, yeah, spoon, what's wrong with that? Do you know what's the crazy thing about a wooden spoon? Did you know you can cook with it? It's nuts. It's like, I used to just wonder why we had this weapon in the kitchen for years. By the way, can I just give a disclaimer? These are just jokes. Obviously, I don't believe you should hit kids. <laughs> but, um, you know. I got hit, so let me joke about it. And if you don't laugh, you're just furthering my trauma. <laughs> Plus I'm brown, so if you don't laugh, that's a hate crime. <laughs> anyway. One of my, uh, one of my favorite, oh, my mom, when, one time she hit me with a wooden spoon and she hit me so hard, the spoon broke. And she was horrified at the low quality of the spoon. She's like, what kind of rubbish? And then she took the spoon replacement money out of my allowance, like, it's, it's evil, right? It's good shit. My favorite story of child abuse. <laughs> I was one of my friends, he was like eight years old, Singapore, he's hanging out in his kitchen. His dad rocks up behind him, just out, turns him around out of nowhere, just slaps him, pow. And the dad's like, oh, wrong uh, son. By the way, not sorry, wrong son, just oh, wrong son. Like he picked up the wrong drink. And then he went to go find the right son and slapped him twice for making him hit the wrong son? How good is that? I mean, there's a lot of therapy, but you know, it made 16 people laugh. I think it's worth it. <laughs>
I think I've got a lead on that guy who pissed in your saxophone last night. <laughs> But like I get this type of pressure from everyone. I don't matter you guys, but like I get it's not just mum. I do get it. I'm nearly 40, not married, no kids. But honestly, man, oh, can you back off, Grandma? Seriously, now she's getting on at me as well, right? Like every family gathering, my cousin's baby shower. She's like, oh, Lisa, <laughs> tick tick tick. <laughs> yeah, my brother's wedding. Oh. Lisa, <laughs> tick, tick, tick. Yeah, yeah, I repaid the favour at a granddad's funeral, so. <laughs> yeah, he's ticking now, Beatrice. <laughs> you can enjoy it, she's still alive. <laughs> Now it's time for Show Us Another One. Aldo, it's me. I'm here. You know where? Well, you know what? Well, I'm a white thing. Answer the machine. Now. Hello, you rang Aldo. I'm not at home. That's a answer machine. I want your friends when you need them. Ah, forget about it. I'll do myself. Hello, call before you dig. Brent speaking. Oh, hello. Uh, I'm going to dig a hole and uh, someone told me I have to call you before I dig. That's correct. What's your name? Well, what's it going to do with you? I think we got a live one here, Kev. Uh, I need a name to call you by. Okay. Well, my name is just Happy, but uh, you're calling me Charlie. Oh, well, address then, please, Charlie. All right. I'm on the corner of uh, Kulo. And the Fun Road in the Brunswick. Okay, I'm just looking that up. Yeah, that's uh, the corner of Fun and Kulo Road. Oh, take it easy. Yeah, no worries. I'm taking it easy. How deep are you digging there, Charlie? Oh, it's Charlie. Oh, yeah, it's a me. How deep are you digging? I dig about six a foot. What are you doing there, Charlie? Digging a grave? <laughs> There's a huge mains on that intersection you've got to watch out for. The mains? The mains is uh, for the horse. There's no horses here. Yeah, all right. Look, just don't dig any more than two foot or you'll hit a water pipe. Okay, two foot's enough. He's dead anyway. Oh, <laughs> he's dead anyway. <laughs> yeah, good one. Hey, Charlie, don't forget the lime pour over the body <laughs> to stop the smell of the odour and decomposing, eh, Kev? <laughs> oh, you think you're smart, huh? You think you're cleverer than me, huh? Don't worry, I've got plenty of lime here, Benny. No, no it's, it's Brent. I wish I was no Brent. No, my name's Brent. What kind of stupid name is this? Charlie, you okay? Uh, I'm sorry, Benny. Uh, uh, I gotta go. Uh, ta -da. Mate, every day we get them, don't we, Kev? <coughs> what are you? No cat? How many lives you have? <sighs> Alright, he's a dead now.
when I'm finished with you, you're going to be cat food. This is for look at me, my daughter, and my wife. Hello, darling. Don't forget the lime cordial for little Giuseppe's drinks. Don't worry, I've got plenty of lime cordial for little Giuseppe. Thank you, darlings. Goodbye. And that's for the $10 you still owe me. <sighs> Goodbye, Jack. Hello? Jack? He took his gun and he went hunting this morning and he hasn't come back. He's been gone bloody ages. Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna see Jack no more. Uh, sorry. I'm gonna hit the road, Jack. I'm gonna see Jack no more. I hit the road, Jack. I don't you come back no more. I hit the road, Jack. I don't you come back no more. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what I say. Hit the road, the Jack. I don't you come back no more. Oh, hit the road, the Jack. I don't you come back no more. That's what I'm saying. All right, and that brings us to uh, another segment in our show. We like to call "Don't Knock It." <laughs> so, of course, we're doing knock knock jokes. So uh, we'll just do a couple of nice little simple ones here. Uh, you know how it works. I'm going to say knock knock. You're going to say. Fantastic. Okay, here we go. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dozen. Dozen Doesn't anybody like knock, knock jokes anymore? Oh. Oh. Come on. <laughs> All right, here we go again. Knock, knock. Who's there? Rhino. Rhino. Rhino, a lot of knock, knock jokes. Oh. Which takes me to the last one. Let's do one more, shall we? Yep. All right, real quick one. Here we go. Knock, knock. Spell. Spell who? Okay. W H O. Oh, yeah, it's one of those ones. Yeah. Well, there you go. You can take those home. You can tell your friends and family. Tell your kids. Someone's got to love them. <laughs>
He came home from school one day. He said to me, Mum, what is it that women use the most to get what they want? Starts with V. I was like, oh, no. He was only 10. He's not supposed to know that stuff. And me, I could only think of one word, OK? And that was not the right word. <laughs> I said, I don't know, Dal. You tell me, what is it that women use the most to get what they want? Starts with V. He said, their voice. Ah, <laughs> oh, so sweet, isn't it? Personally, I find using my vagina far more effective. <laughs> I find if I use my voice, I run the risk of being called a nag. <laughs> find the vagina gets a much higher level of cooperation. <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> I call it my superpower. Yeah. And then a few years ago, I found the other half of my superpower. Do you know what that is? Boobs. Of course, I found this out one day when I was skinny dipping with my husband in mum's backyard pool a few years ago. I thought, this is the time to teach him backstroke. So I took off down the pool in the nude, doing backstroke, turned around, came back, and I said to my husband, did you see what I did? And he looked at me with this dreamy look on his face. He said, babe, I'm sorry, I didn't see anything. All I could see were your two boobs floating in the water. And then when you put your arm up to do one stroke, one boob leaned over and jiggled. And then the other boob leaned over and jiggled. It was amazing. It was like watching two vanilla puddings dancing together. It was at that point I realised my boobs are more powerful than the rest of me put together. What can I say? But um, from there, I have got something to read out to you guys. Let's see. It's an article I read online, Forbes Online. Some of you might get into this. We'll see how we go. Here we go. All right. Studies find that cannabis compounds, weed, can pre help prevent infection by COVID-19 virus. How good is that? <laughs> I know, we stoners have been taking our own vaccine. <laughs> Didn't even know it. I've been taking a booster every day. <laughs> How good am I? Truth be known, I smoked so many bongs over all the lockdowns, I got RSI in my hand from putting my thumb on the shoddy so many times. <laughs> True story. How crazy is that? It's like getting tennis elbow from drinking too much. A very unexpected affliction. Now, I want to get an idea of Dandy Nong represent. Who likes to smoke a bit of weed around here? Come on, hands up, folks, hands up. I'm the only one on camera here. You, look, none of you have put your hands up. I know you're a bunch of liars. I know you're a bunch of liars. So from those people who, who did not put their hands up, how many of you have caught COVID-19? Come on, you can put your hand up. Excellent, thank you. Me too. Clearly, we weren't smoking enough. <laughs> I think we need to up the ante here, folks. We need to smoke a bit more, you know, do our bit. Keep everybody safe. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm very pro-marijuana. Uh, uh, actually, in fact, you can all call me Snoop Bitch. <laughs> my new comedy name. I'm so pro-marijuana, I don't just think it should be legalised, I think it should be mandatory. What have we got time for? All right, I've got a song for you tonight, okay? Now, some of us are old enough, including myself, to remember a song back in the 90s called Bitch by Meredith Brooks. Does anybody remember that song? Yes, yes, it was a big hit, big hit. And then in the year 2000, our very own Melbourne comedian Chris Franklin did a parody of that song called Bloke. Have any of you folks heard that song? No? Well, this is... Then, 22 years later, I decided it was time for me to do a parody of his parody, so I've done a song called Chick. So, you ready for this? Yeah. All right, here we go. Excellent. We ready to go? Yeah. Awesome. Now you'll know, I've done my own choreography. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? There's a bit more later on. I'm not a new age chick. 
I like chicken, parmigiana, beer and dick. All those skinny bitches pose on Instagram, I like mac and cheese with ham. Couldn't give a shit. Get over it. Yesterday I tried to hide the credit card bill. Yes, I also lie. I went shoe shopping, girls. I know you go out drinking. The boys give you an alibi. But you know, if I leave, you'll have to heat up your own meat pie. I'm a chick, I'm an ocker, and I'm glad you like my knockers. Been round with all the lads, got six kids, all different dads. If you get up to pee, you can get your own BB. Bring me a bong, put on your thongs and walk away. I'm richer than you think. I am. I've got six kids on Centrelink. It's good wicket. I've got stretch marks like a zebra. My tits, they touch the floor. My jeans give me a muffin top. You couldn't ask for more. I'm a chick, I'm a yobbo, and I'm leaving you for robo. Yes, I've got six kids, and I made some porno vids. When I'm drunk, I like to twerk. I don't want to go to work, you know you wouldn't want me any other way. Here comes the Corrie. <laughs> me twerking. Honest to God, I jiggle more here than I do here. It's a saggy skin. Twerking was not invented by or for white middle-aged women. Just when you think you've got me figured out, I get my period. Sometimes I cry, I don't even know why. Just bring me the Tim Tams. I'm a chick. I'm a Sheila, I get shit based on tequila. When I'm horny, I'm on top. But you've got Foster's flop, got a tramp stamp tattoo. I reckon it'll do you, no, you wouldn't want me any other way. I'm a chick, I'm an ocker, and I'm glad you like my knockers. Been round with all the lads, got six kids, all different dads. When you get up to pee, you can get your own VB. Bring me a bomb, put on your thongs and walk away. That's the end of the song, folks. Thank you very much. You've got an amazing audience. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank, you Marco. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good job. Thanks very much. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, for this one. And round of applause for Steve from Short sure Shot for uh, Short sure Shot Productions. Thank you. Thanks for Daniel doing our AV work, working very hard in the background. Thank you. And thanks to the Dandenong Club for putting on such a beautiful venue and looking after you all tonight with lovely food and drinks. Thanks very much. Good night. And uh, I'd like to sign off with saying be good and good things happen. Thank you.